Once upon a time in the annals of history, amidst the rise and fall of empires, there lived extraordinary individuals who commanded armies, inspired nations, and shaped the destiny of civilizations. These were the leaders, the visionaries, the men and women who possessed an uncanny ability to ignite the spirits of others and achieve the seemingly impossible. Their stories, etched in the chronicles of time, offer profound lessons in leadership, timeless wisdom that transcends cultures and epochs. From the sun-drenched plains of ancient Egypt to the war-torn battlefields of medieval Europe, the tapestry of history is woven with tales of triumph and tribulation, of leaders who rose to the occasion and those who faltered under pressure. These narratives, passed down through generations, serve as invaluable guides, illuminating the path to effective leadership in a world that is constantly evolving. In this exploration of leadership, we embark on a captivating journey through time, delving into the lives and legacies of remarkable individuals who've left an indelible mark on the world. Through their stories, we uncover the fundamental principles that underpin effective Principles that remain as relevant today as they were centuries ago. Join us as we unearth the timeless wisdom that will empower you to lead with confidence, inspire excellence, and leave your own legacy on the world. Leadership in its purest form is not a position of power or authority, but rather a profound responsibility, a sacred trust bestowed upon those who dare to guide others. It is the art of inspiring a shared vision, of igniting the passions of individuals and uniting them towards a common goal. True leaders, regardless of their era or domain, possess an unwavering belief in the potential of those they lead, nurturing their talents and empowering them to reach new heights. They understand that leadership is not about wielding power, but about empowering others, about creating an environment where every individual feels valued, respected, and inspired to contribute their best. Effective leadership is a delicate dance between setting a clear course and fostering a culture of collaboration, between providing guidance and encouraging autonomy. Throughout history, the most successful leaders have understood that true leadership is not about personal gain or self-aggrandizement, but about service to a cause greater than oneself. It is about leaving the world a better place than you found it, about making a lasting impact on the lives of others. As we embark on this journey through time, we will uncover the essential qualities that have defined great leaders throughout the ages. Qualities such as integrity, empathy, courage, and resilience. By examining the successes and failures of those who came before us, we can gain invaluable insights into the timeless principles of leadership. Principles that will empower us to navigate the complexities of our modern world and lead with wisdom, purpose and impact. Join us as we delve into the annals of history, seeking guidance from the past to shape a brighter future. Once upon a time, in the heart of the Crusades, a young king rose to prominence, his name echoing through the ages. Richard I, the Lionheart. Richard's reign, though brief, was marked by military brilliance and an unwavering commitment to his cause, particularly evident during the protracted Siege of Acre. This arduous campaign, a gruelling test of leadership under extreme pressure, offers a glimpse into Richard's strategic prowess and his unique approach to leading men in the face of adversity. The year was 1191. The Holy Land, a land steeped in religious significance, was locked in a bitter struggle between Christian crusaders and the formidable forces of Saladin, the Muslim Sultan. Acre, a strategic port city, lay under siege, its fate hanging in the balance. It was here that Richard I, newly crowned King of England, would prove his mettle, not just as a warrior king, but as a leader of men. Richard understood that victory at Acre would hinge not just on military might, but on the unwavering spirit of his troops. He knew that morale, particularly during a prolonged siege, could prove as decisive as any weapon. Thus, he made it his priority to foster a sense of unity and purpose among his men, reminding them of the significance of their mission and the glory that awaited them. 
We fight not for land or gold, he declared, his voice booming across the encampment, but for the glory of God and the liberation of the holy city. His words ignited a fire in the hearts of his men, instilling in them a belief in something greater than themselves. Despite the rigors of the siege, Richard remained acutely aware of the hardships endured by his men. He understood that hunger, disease and fatigue could cripple an army just as effectively as any enemy sword. He made every effort to alleviate their suffering, sharing their meager rations, tending to their wounds and offering words of encouragement amidst the despair. One particularly poignant anecdote recounts how Richard, upon learning of a severe outbreak of scurvy among his troops, ordered his own stores of spices and citrus fruits to be distributed among the sick. Their well-being, he proclaimed, is as vital to our victory as any siege engine. This act of compassion, this willingness to share the burdens of his men, resonated deeply within the ranks. It fostered a profound sense of loyalty and respect for their king, a leader who not only commanded but also served alongside them. Leading from the front shared hardship and mutual respect, Richard III was not a king who commanded from the safety of his tent. He was a warrior king, a leader who led from the front, sharing in the dangers and hardships faced by his men. During the Siege of Acre, he could often be found at the forefront of the battle, his courage and martial prowess inspiring his troops to feats of valor. He who aspires to command, Richard once declared, must first prove himself worthy of being followed. And indeed, Richard led by example, his personal bravery earning him the admiration and respect of his men. This hands-on approach to leadership fostered a sense of trust and camaraderie between Richard and his troops. They saw him not as a distant figurehead, but as a fellow warrior, fighting alongside them, sharing their risks and celebrating their triumphs. This shared experience, this bond forged in the crucible of battle, proved to be a potent force multiplier, strengthening the resolve of the entire Crusader army. A bond of steel forging unity in the face of adversity. The Siege of Acre was not solely an English endeavor. Crusaders from across Europe had converged on this strategic city, each contingent bringing its own languages, customs, and ambitions. Maintaining unity and focus among such a diverse force was no mean feat, yet Richard managed to forge them into a cohesive fighting force. He achieved this through a combination of diplomacy, charisma, and an unwavering focus on the common goal, the recapture of Jerusalem. He treated his fellow crusader leaders with respect, recognizing their contributions and addressing their concerns. He appealed to their shared faith and their common enemy, reminding them that their strength lay in unity. We may come from different lands and speak different tongues, he proclaimed, his voice ringing out across the assembled armies, but we are united under the banner of the cross, and it is under this banner that we shall triumph. His words resonated with the assembled host, reminding them that their differences paled in comparison to their shared objective. The power of inspiration, a leader's legacy. The siege of Acre, a grueling two-year ordeal eventually culminated in a decisive crusader victory. The city's fall marked a turning point in the Third Crusade, a testament to the leadership of Richard I. His ability to inspire and unite his troops, to share their hardships and lead from the front, had proven instrumental in securing this hard-fought triumph. Richard's leadership during the Siege of Acre offers timeless lessons for aspiring leaders, even in our modern era. It underscores the importance of empathy, the power of leading by example, and the need to foster unity and purpose among team members. Richard I, the Lionheart, may be a figure from a bygone era, but his leadership lessons resonate even today. He reminds us that true leadership is not about wielding power, but about empowering others, about inspiring them to achieve greatness together.
Once upon a time, at the dawn of the 19th century, a name synonymous with military genius and unbridled ambition rose to dominate the European landscape, Napoleon Bonaparte. His meteoric rise from Corsican outsider to Emperor of France captivated a continent, yet it was his ill-fated invasion of Russia in 1812 that revealed the darker side of his leadership, a cautionary tale of hubris and the perils of unchecked ambition. Napoleon's Russian campaign, a grandiose scheme to crush the Tsar's forces and solidify his continental dominance, stands as a stark reminder that even the most brilliant strategists can fall prey to their own ambitions. It was a campaign marked by a series of miscalculations and strategic blunders, ultimately culminating in a catastrophic retreat that decimated the Grande Armée and irrevocably shattered Napoleon's aura of invincibility. The seeds of this disastrous campaign were sown in Napoleon's unwavering belief in his own destiny, a conviction that blinded him to the realities of waging war in the vast and unforgiving expanse of Russia. He underestimated the resolve of his enemy, the logistical challenges of campaigning in such a vast land and the devastating impact of the Russian winter. I have come once more to wrestle with destiny. Napoleon declared, his voice echoing with unwavering confidence as he led his troops across the Nyman River into Russia. Little did he know that destiny had a cruel twist of fate in store for him and his once mighty army. As Napoleon's Grande Armée, a formidable force of over 600,000 men, marched deeper into Russia, whispers of caution began to emerge from within his own ranks. Experienced generals, veterans of countless campaigns, expressed concerns about the stretched supply lines, the lack of local support and the unpredictable nature of the Russian weather. Yet Napoleon, blinded by his own ambition and a belief in his own strategic genius, dismissed their concerns as unfounded pessimism. He refused to heed the warnings of those who dared question his judgment, believing that his own intuition and past triumphs were enough to overcome any obstacle. The strong man is he who can hold his own against the buffetings of destiny, Napoleon proclaimed, his words betraying a dangerous disregard for the realities of the situation unfolding before him. His refusal to listen to dissenting voices, to acknowledge the validity of alternative perspectives, proved to be a fatal flaw in his leadership. This unwillingness to consider opposing viewpoints created a climate of fear and sycophancy within his inner circle. Napoleon's leadership style, characterized by centralized control and a strict adherence to his own strategic vision, proved particularly ill-suited to the challenges of the Russian campaign. He issued detailed orders from his headquarters, often hundreds of miles from the front lines, leaving little room for initiative or adaptation by his field commanders. This rigid approach, while effective in previous campaigns, fought on familiar battlefields, stifled creativity and responsiveness within the ranks. Generals, hesitant to deviate from Napoleon's meticulously crafted plans, often missed opportunities to exploit enemy weaknesses or adapt to the ever-changing circumstances of the campaign. Moreover, Napoleon's insistence on micromanaging every aspect of the war effort bred resentment and frustration among his troops. Soldiers, accustomed to a degree of autonomy and initiative, felt stifled by the constant stream of orders from above, their morale dwindling with each passing day. One bad general is worth two good ones, Napoleon once remarked, a statement reflecting his deep-seated distrust of delegating authority. Yet, in the vastness of Russia, his centralized command structure proved to be a liability, hindering rather than enhancing his army's effectiveness. A chasm of disconnect losing touch with the realities on the ground. As the Grande Armée ventured deeper into the Russian heartland, a chasm of disconnect grew between Napoleon's headquarters and the harsh realities faced by his troops on the ground. Confined to his mobile headquarters, surrounded by maps and advisors, Napoleon remained largely oblivious to the deteriorating conditions of his army. 
He received sanitised reports from his generals, eager to paint a rosy picture of the campaign's progress, concealing the growing discontent, the dwindling supplies and the mounting casualties. Napoleon, isolated from the daily struggles of his men, remained convinced of his own invincibility, his judgment clouded by a dangerous detachment from the realities on the ground. This disconnect between leader and led had a profound impact on the morale of the Grande Armée. Soldiers, witnessing the hardships endured by their comrades while their emperor remained seemingly oblivious, began to question his leadership and their commitment to his cause. The best way to keep one's word is not to give it, Napoleon once cynically remarked. Yet, in the eyes of his troops, his failure to acknowledge their sacrifices and address their concerns spoke volumes, eroding the trust and loyalty that had once been the bedrock of his success. Winter's bite, the crushing weight of miscalculation, the turning point of the Russian campaign, the moment when Napoleon's hubris and miscalculations collided with the brutal realities of war, came with the arrival of the Russian winter. The Grande Armée, already weakened by months of campaigning, dwindling supplies and constant harassment by Russian forces, was ill-prepared for the onslaught of freezing temperatures, biting winds and heavy snow. The once mighty force that had marched into Russia with such confidence now found itself decimated by hunger, disease and the relentless cold. Horses perished by the thousands, their riders forced to abandon artillery and supplies, their movements slowed to a crawl. From the sublime to the ridiculous, there is but one step Napoleon famously declared after his escape from Elba. Never were his words more prophetic than during the disastrous retreat from Moscow, a testament to the crushing weight of his miscalculations and the unforgiving nature of war. The Russian campaign, a stark reminder of the dangers of unchecked ambition and the importance of adaptability, humility, and a willingness to listen to dissenting voices, serves as a cautionary tale for leaders across time. It underscores the importance of staying connected to the realities faced by those we lead and the need to temper ambition with wisdom, foresight and a deep respect for the human cost of our decisions. Echoes of history. Modern research validates timeless leadership. Once upon a time, the lessons of leadership were passed down through generations, tales whispered around campfires and etched into the annals of history. Today, these timeless truths find new resonance in the realm of modern research, their wisdom validated by empirical studies and data-driven analysis. The very principles that guided Richard the Lionheart to victory at Acre and led Napoleon astray in the depths of the Russian winter are now being dissected in boardrooms and research labs around the world. We find that the echoes of history resonate strongly within contemporary leadership studies. The echoes of Richard's empathy-driven leadership and Napoleon's tragic disregard for his troops' welfare can be seen in modern research on emotional intelligence, psychological safety, and the impact of leadership styles on team performance. In a world saturated with data, it's reassuring, even inspiring, to find that the fundamental principles of leadership remain constant. The human element, the need for connection, understanding, and shared purpose transcends time and circumstance. This part of our exploration delves into the fascinating intersection of history and modern research, highlighting studies that corroborate the timeless leadership lessons gleaned from the past. We'll explore how empathy, leading by example, open communication and a willingness to learn from mistakes are not just relics of a bygone era, but rather essential ingredients for success in the modern workplace. The Power of Empathy, a cornerstone of effective leadership from a 2018 study published in the Journal of Organizational Behavior titled Empathy in the Workplace, a Meta-Analysis, confirms what Richard I seemed to instinctively understand. Empathy is not a soft skill, but a crucial driver of team performance and organizational success. 
The study, which analysed data from over 100,000 employees across various industries, found a strong positive correlation between empathetic leadership and employee engagement, innovation and overall well-being. The researchers concluded that empathetic leaders foster a sense of psychological safety within their teams, encouraging open communication, risk-taking and a willingness to share ideas. This resonates strongly with Richard's approach at Acre, where his genuine concern for his men fostered a deep sense of loyalty and motivated them to fight for a cause greater than themselves. Conversely, the study highlights the detrimental impact of leaders who lack empathy, noting increased employee burnout, conflict and reduced productivity. Napoleon's aloofness during the Russian campaign, his disregard for the suffering of his troops, serves as a powerful historical example of the consequences of an empathy deficit in leadership. The study's findings reinforce the timeless wisdom that effective leadership is built on a foundation of human connection and understanding. Leaders who can step into the shoes of their team members, who can understand their perspectives, motivations and concerns, are better equipped to create a positive and productive work environment. Leading from the front shared struggle and the birth of trust, from a 2021 study published in the Leadership Quarterly, titled Leading from the Front Lines, the effects of leader shared work experiences on follower trust and team performance echoes the leadership approach embodied by Richard I during the siege of Acre. The study found that leaders who actively participate in the work alongside their teams, sharing in the challenges and triumphs, cultivate higher levels of trust and inspire greater effort and performance. The researchers suggest that this shared struggle creates a sense of camaraderie and mutual respect breaking down hierarchical barriers and fostering a stronger sense of collective purpose. This resonates powerfully with Richard's decision to fight alongside his men, sharing their risks and hardships, which solidified their trust in him and their commitment to the cause. Conversely, leaders who remain distant, issuing directives from afar, risk creating a disconnect that breeds resentment and undermines team cohesion. This echoes the tragic downfall of Napoleon's leadership in Russia, where his isolation from the realities faced by his troops eroded their trust and ultimately contributed to the campaign's disastrous outcome. The study's findings underscore the timeless power of leading by example, of demonstrating a willingness to roll up one's sleeves and share in the challenges faced by the team. Such leaders build trust, inspire commitment, and create a sense of shared ownership that drives performance and fosters a culture of collective success. The Perils of Micromanagement, Stifling Innovation and Motivation, from a 2019 study published in the Journal of Applied Psychology titled The Destructive Nature of Micromanagement, a Meta-Analysis, provides compelling evidence for a leadership lesson tragically illustrated by Napoleon's downfall. The study, analysing data from over 200 research papers, concluded that micromanagement, characterised by excessive control and a lack of autonomy, has a significant negative impact on employee morale, creativity and job satisfaction. The researchers found that micromanaged employees often feel stifled, their creativity stifled, and their intrinsic motivation diminished. This resonates with the stifling atmosphere created by Napoleon's rigid command structure during the Russian campaign, where his generals, fearful of deviating from his strict orders, missed opportunities for adaptation and innovation. The study underscores the importance of empowering employees, providing them with the autonomy and trust to make decisions and take ownership of their work. This approach, in contrast to Napoleon's micromanagement, fosters a sense of ownership, encourages initiative, and unlocks the creative potential within teams. The findings reinforce the timeless wisdom that effective leadership involves knowing when to step back and empower others to excel. It's about providing guidance and support while creating space for autonomy, innovation, and a sense of ownership among team members.
The Importance of Open Communication Bridging the Gap Between Leaders and Teams 2022 In 2022, a Harvard Business Review article titled The Power of Open Communication emphasized the critical role of communication in bridging the gap between leaders and their teams. The article, drawing on interviews with successful CEOs and extensive organizational research, highlighted how open, transparent communication fosters trust, alignment, and a shared sense of purpose. The article stressed that effective communication is not just about disseminating information from the top down, but about creating a culture of open dialogue, where feedback is actively solicited and diverse perspectives are valued. This stands in stark contrast to the communication breakdown that plagued Napoleon's Russian campaign, where his isolation and reliance on filtered information led to fatal miscalculations. Open communication, the article argues, enables leaders to stay connected to the realities faced by their teams, to identify and address concerns early on, and to foster a sense of shared understanding and commitment. It's about creating a culture where everyone feels heard, valued and empowered to contribute their ideas and perspectives. The insights from this article reinforce the timeless importance of clear, honest and two-way communication and effective leadership. Leaders who prioritise open communication build stronger relationships, foster trust and create a more engaged and productive work environment. From dictatorship to empowerment, a Silicon Valley turnaround. Once upon a time, not in a distant kingdom, but in the heart of Silicon Valley, a tech startup found itself on the brink of collapse. Despite having a brilliant product and a talented team, the company was plagued by missed deadlines, plummeting morale and a stifling work environment. At the helm was a CEO, let's call him Brian, whose leadership style mirrored the autocratic approach of Napoleon characterized by micromanagement, a lack of trust in his team, and a deafness to feedback from the trenches. Brian, convinced of his own genius, dictated every decision, large and small. He hoarded information, stifling innovation and leaving his team feeling like cogs in a machine rather than valued contributors. The company, once a hotbed of creativity and dynamism, had become stagnant, its potential stifled by Brian's iron grip. However, the company's board, recognising the need for drastic change, intervened. Brian was replaced by a new CEO, Sarah, whose leadership style was the antithesis of her predecessors. Sarah, a firm believer in the power of teamwork and inspired by the empathetic leadership of Richard the Lionheart, set out to transform the company's culture from the ground up. She understood that to turn the company around, she needed to empower her team, foster open communication, and create an environment where everyone felt valued and heard. Her leadership wouldn't be about wielding power, but about enabling others to do their best work. Breaking down the walls, fostering open communication and collaboration. Sarah's first order of business was to tear down the metaphorical walls that had been erected under Brian's reign. She implemented an open door policy, encouraging employees at all levels to share their ideas, concerns and feedback. Regular town hall meetings were instituted, providing a platform for open dialogue and transparency. Recognising the dangers of isolation and the importance of staying connected to the realities faced by her team, Sarah made it a point to regularly interact with employees from different departments. She participated in brainstorming sessions, sought input on strategic decisions and actively listened to the challenges and triumphs experienced by those on the front lines. This shift towards open communication had an immediate impact. Employees, no longer afraid to speak their minds, began sharing innovative ideas and providing valuable feedback. The free flow of information led to more informed decision-making, improved collaboration and a renewed sense of ownership among the team. Sarah's commitment to transparency extended to the company's performance as well. She regularly shared key metrics with the entire team, celebrating successes and openly discussing setbacks. This transparency fostered a sense of shared responsibility and accountability, creating a unified team all rowing in the same direction.
the power of shared struggle, a CEO who leads from the trenches. Sarah, inspired by Richard the Lionheart's hands-on approach at Acre, firmly believed in the power of leading from the trenches. She didn't shy away from getting her hands dirty, often working alongside her team on challenging projects, sharing in their struggles and celebrating their victories. One particularly challenging project involved meeting a critical deadline for a major product launch. Instead of barking orders from her office, Sarah rolled up her sleeves and joined the development team, working late nights and weekends alongside them. Her willingness to share in the pressure and sacrifice to get her hands dirty alongside her team spoke volumes. This shared experience fostered a deep sense of camaraderie and mutual respect. Employees witnessed firsthand Sarah's dedication, her work ethic and her genuine care for the success of the team. They saw her not as a distant figurehead, but as a leader who was willing to fight alongside them, sharing in both the challenges and the rewards. This approach, a stark contrast to the isolation and micromanagement that had characterised Brian's leadership, proved transformative. Employees, inspired by Sarah's example and motivated by a renewed sense of shared purpose, went above and beyond to deliver on the project, meeting the deadline and exceeding expectations. Celebrating success, learning from setbacks, a culture of continuous improvement. Sarah understood that building a thriving company culture wasn't just about celebrating successes, it was also about learning from setbacks. She fostered an environment where mistakes were seen as opportunities for growth, where open and honest feedback was encouraged, and where continuous improvement was an integral part of the company's DNA. When a project didn't go as planned, Sarah didn't resort to blame or finger-pointing. Instead, she facilitated open and honest post-mortems, encouraging team members to share their perspectives, identify areas for improvement and develop actionable solutions. This approach, rooted in a growth mindset, fostered a culture of learning and resilience. Sarah also implemented a system for recognising and rewarding individual and team contributions. She understood that acknowledging and celebrating success was crucial to maintaining morale, boosting motivation and reinforcing desired behaviours. These celebrations, however small, served as tangible reminders of the team's collective achievements and reinforced the positive impact of their efforts. Under Sarah's leadership, the company underwent a remarkable transformation. The once stifling work environment was replaced by a vibrant and collaborative culture. Employees, empowered, engaged and united by a shared vision, consistently exceeded expectations. The company's turnaround served as a powerful testament to the enduring relevance of timeless leadership principles in the modern world. Once upon a time, we embarked on a journey through the annals of history seeking guidance from the past to illuminate the path to effective leadership in the present. We delved into the triumphs and tribulations of iconic figures like Richard the Lionheart and Napoleon Bonaparte, uncovering timeless lessons in empathy, the power of leading by example, the perils of micromanagement and the importance of open communication. We've seen how these very principles, once whispered on ancient battlefields and debated in royal courts, are now being validated by cutting-edge research in the fields of organisational behaviour, psychology and leadership development. It's a testament to the enduring power of human nature, the fundamental truths that transcend time, technology and societal evolution. As we've journeyed from the battlefields of Acre to the boardrooms of Silicon Valley, one resounding truth has emerged. Effective leadership is not about wielding power, but about empowering others. It's about creating an environment where every individual feels valued, respected and inspired to contribute their best. It's about fostering a sense of shared purpose, a belief in something greater than oneself and a commitment to achieving collective success. We've seen the transformative power of empathy, the importance of leading from the trenches, the dangers of isolation and micromanagement, and the critical role of open communication in building trust and alignment. These timeless principles woven together form the very fabric of effective leadership, a tapestry of wisdom passed down through generations, its threads as relevant today as they were centuries ago.
The stories we've explored, both from history and the modern world, serve as powerful reminders that leadership is not a destination, but a journey. It's a continuous process of learning, adapting and evolving, of honing our skills, challenging our assumptions and striving to become the best versions of ourselves. Within each of us lies the potential for greatness, the capacity to inspire, to motivate and to make a meaningful difference in the world. But unlocking this potential requires more than just ambition or good intentions. It demands a conscious commitment to cultivating the qualities of effective leadership, to embracing the timeless wisdom that has guided humanity for millennia. It requires us to lead with empathy, to understand and connect with those we lead on a human level. It demands that we lead from the front, setting the example, sharing in the struggles and celebrating the triumphs alongside our teams. It compels us to foster open communication, to create an environment where feedback is valued and diverse perspectives are embraced. And it requires us to learn from our mistakes, to view setbacks as opportunities for growth and to continuously strive for improvement. The journey of leadership is not for the faint of heart. It demands courage, resilience and an unwavering belief in oneself and the potential of others. But the rewards, both personal and collective, are immeasurable. As we conclude this exploration of leadership, let us remember the words of the great Nelson Mandela who said, it always seems impossible until it's done. The challenges we face as leaders may seem daunting, the path forward uncertain, but let us draw inspiration from the leaders who came before us. Those who dared to dream big, who faced adversity with courage and compassion, and who ultimately left the world a better place than they found it. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And today, you have the opportunity to take that step, embrace the challenge of leadership, cultivate the timeless principles we've explored, and unlock your full potential to inspire, to motivate, and to make a lasting impact on the world. Here at Mjoga Coaching and Consulting, we believe in your potential to become an exceptional leader. We're here to support you on your journey, to provide you with the tools, guidance and encouragement you need to overcome challenges, achieve your goals and leave your mark on the world. Remember, leadership is not about being in charge. It's about taking care of those in your charge. Simon Sinek.